Okay, see I'm smiling halfway. I just had a stroke. Hi everyone, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I cannot wait to share this video with you. Uh, three days ago I had a stroke. Yes, that is right. Three days ago was Tuesday. It is Saturday morning now and because I recognized the stroke symptoms early and got right to the hospital, I was able to have a clot buster drug that totally reversed the course of my stroke. Within about an hour, things started to turn around. My smile was getting better. The, the muscle weakness I had on my entire left side was really decreasing, almost gone. It was totally amazing. And quite honestly, I first thought about not sharing this experience with you because my channel, 50 Plus Beauty, is about beauty, health, skincare, to help us look our best. I'm 65 years old, and the last thing I ever thought I would do is share a video with you about my stroke. It is pretty flabbergasting to me that just three days ago, I thought my whole life had changed because I recognized that I did have a stroke. And again, because I was able to immediately realize I was having a stroke, I got to the hospital and within an hour and a half, I was able to have this clot busting drug, which removed the clot from my brain and started my healing almost instantaneously. And this video is important for you to watch and important for you to send on to everyone else you know, because stroke is actually the second leading cause of death in women. The first is heart disease and the fact that stroke is the second leading cause of death in women was brought home to me recently in my junior high girls group. For about the past six years, nine girls that all went to junior high school together, we have been meeting once a year to do a girls trip. Within the last year, three of the nine of us have had a stroke and one of our group died. Julie died, which was totally horrible. But it probably helped me in one way that we all knew some details about Julie's situation. And apparently she woke up one morning, thought she'd had a stroke, had the foresight to call 911, unlocked her front door, opened her front door, fell down, passed out, and then three or four days later she died in the hospital. But they were able to get to her. And so that was basically three out of nine is about 30%. Is that right? Yeah, three out of nine is 33% of the nine of us have had a stroke in the past year. And in this video, I will be sharing all the details of my stroke. And then after that, stick around because I'm going to give you an acronym, Be Fast, which will help you identify very early on if you are having a stroke or someone around you is having a stroke. You know, I had a nurse in the hospital say to me, Beth, I wish that I had known what you know. She said, that's impressive that you realized it was a stroke because she said, basically she related a story where her dad was having difficulties and she went off to work and came back and he was still having difficulties. And she said he died of that stroke. And she said, I really wish that I had been educated on how to identify. And I think this was long before she became a nurse. So she did not, uh, you know, she was not able to identify that her dad was having a stroke. So it is vital that we all know these early warning symptoms and it is very important that we get to the hospital as soon as we can so they can start some of these life-saving and life-preserving treatments. Okay, let me get down to this and I'll tell you exactly what happened. Again, it was three mornings ago, Tuesday morning about 5 a.m. Monday through Friday, I go down in the basement and do weight training. Well, Tuesday morning, I went down in the basement. I was a little bit late, maybe about 5.30, no, about 5.45, I would say. I did my first set of arm exercises. And on the second rep, all of a sudden, this arm kind of went tingly and numb. And immediately, in part because of Julie's experience, immediately I thought, oh my goodness, I'm having a stroke. And then almost immediately, my left leg went numb. Then I got up, and it's funny because I was apparently hitting my upper left thigh with my hand, and I didn't realize that I was hitting myself, and I felt like a separate weight was somehow hung around my waist and that it was hitting my hand. And the interesting thing is I now know that when you have a stroke, sometimes the affected body part will not even feel like it's a part of your body. And so I felt this hand as a weight. And immediately I thought, I'm going to pass out and it is not quite 6 a.m. and Alan sleeps till 6 a.m. And I thought if I pass out down in this basement in this workout room, he will never find me. So I made the way up the stairs and I said, call 911, I'm having a stroke. 
call 911, I'm having a stroke. And he was totally freaked out. He got up, he called 911. I thought I should take an aspirin. Come to find out, they said no. Only with a heart attack should you take an aspirin. The answer is no on a stroke because sometimes you have a brain bleed with a stroke and you don't want to introduce an aspirin which will thin your blood and perhaps make that brain bleed even worse. So don't do anything. Call 911 and ask them what to do. Now this video I'm going to show you is about five minutes before the ambulance came and I will tell you that I probably had the stroke about, you know, just before 6 a.m. in the morning and then I got to the hospital and by 7.30 they were able to give me this clot buster drug which totally started to turn my symptoms around. And the reason it is so crucial for you to recognize that you or a loved one is having a stroke and get to the hospital is because the window on that clot buster drug which totally saved my life or at least my face and my left hand side you have to get that clot buster drug within the first two and a half hours of the onset of the stroke. So time is of the essence. I had a nurse tell me in the hospital that many times people will be embarrassed. They'll think, oh, I've just got a pulled muscle. You know, I'll wait a few hours and then go to the hospital. But by the time they get to the hospital five or six hours later, it's too late and they can't get that clot buster drug and any damage, any brain damage they have sustained during their stroke is here to stay. So it's very important to act fast. Okay, let's get back to Tuesday morning, three days ago, just before the ambulance came. Okay, see I'm smiling halfway. I just had a stroke, <laughs> probably a mild stroke like a TIA, but I just had a stroke down in the basement. I was doing my arm weights on a bench, on an incline bench, and I was pushing my arm up in the air. I had just 15 pounds, which is not heavy. And unfortunately, my le left arm started going numb. And then I thought immediately, maybe I was having a stroke. My left leg went numb. And then I stood up and I could feel something hitting against my leg. And I think it was actually my left arm, but it felt like a dead weight was hitting against my leg. I immediately knew it was a stroke, and I ran upstairs, and I said, Alan, get out of bed. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Call 911. So he called 911, and they said, don't eat or drink, which I have not done. And they said, we will send an ambulance for you. And so we're waiting for the ambulance. They said to unlock the front door, that's in case you're alone and you, uh, like, faint or something. Unlock the front door. And then... Um, Turn on the lights outside, so I've done that. Hmm, it's weird having a smile only on the right. But I have to say that almost immediately, it all started to feel much, much better. And the left side got much better, like I can. My, my hand is weak, and it feels weird. But it is, you know, I still have strength there, some strength. So, and I put my hair back in a nub, using my left hand too. It was a little weird, but I'm good. I'm feeling amazing, considering I had an S-T-R-O-K-E within the last 12 hours. Actually, almost exactly 12 hours ago right now, and I'm doing very great. And the message in all of this for all of you ladies out there is, don't think it'll be too much trouble for someone to take you to the hospital or you'll be embarrassed if it's nothing. If you have any suspicion of a stroke, you know, basically slurred speech, blurred vision, headaches, weirdness on one side or the other, tingles, that kind of thing, go to the emergency room and get taken care of. Because if you wait more than two hours, you can't get the clot, clot buster. <laughs> can't say it. And that took me from this 12 hours ago to this. And I can smile. And I always had a slightly crooked smile. So I'd say it's back to normal. It's slightly crooked as it was before. It is 5.03 in the morning. I'm still in Wesley Hospital. They wanted to wait. They're doing a second CT scan. I had the first one when I first got here yesterday and they wanted to do the second one at six because I guess they figure that is when I had the stroke. And I am really so happy about how everything's worked out. Number one, I didn't think I was old enough for a stroke. <laughs> And I'm really debating about telling everyone about it because, you know, it makes you feel really old to be the person who had a stroke. You know, it just, I mean, these glasses are driving me crazy. I'm taking them off. I don't have contacts on, so I can't see myself very well, but that's okay. But then I have another way of thinking about it that 
one of the main points of my channel, really, I've always felt, is to help women. And, you know, I just feel like maybe this is a message that I need to share with all of you. And maybe you need to pass it around. Because I apparently am doing so well. I got my smile back and um, I took a cognition test yesterday. I couldn't take pictures of the staff because I didn't think the hospital would like that. But I took a cognition test and there were 30 possible right answers and I got 28. And apparently even the average person with, with no stroke gets 26. So I'm a smarty, you know, what can I say? But anyway, the whole reason that I went from how I looked when I first got the stroke to now is that I acted fast. And do share this video with every female you know, because I'm so happy. I mean, if nothing else, I look a lot better than I did yesterday morning. I look a lot better and I, I feel totally back to normal, really. Now I thought, because I was doing so well, that I didn't really have a full fledged stroke. So I thought, well, I just had a TIA. My grandmother supposedly had TIAs when she got very old. So I thought, well, that must be what I had because I'm healing so well. And he said, oh no, you, you had a full blown stroke. Tell me how much better I look today versus yesterday. Um, you look much better today. Yeah, you're smiling. <laughs> I'm smiling. Yeah. I'm, and I'm not drooping on one side, am I? No. I have not. my normal crooked smile back, not the stroke crooked smile. Okay. Now let me tell you what to do if you suspect you or a loved one is having a stroke, how to identify that. And it is an acronym called Be Fast, and here it is. The B stands for balance. If you or a loved one loses your balance, gets a headache, or feels dizzy, that is a sign to call 911. The E in Be Fast is your eyes. If you have blurred vision in any way, that can also be a symptom that you're having a stroke. The F in Be Fast is one side of your face drooping, and that was certainly the case with me. My left hand side of my face was really drooping. Now, the A in Be Fast is your arms, and basically that's any time you have weakness in your arms or legs, it could be a sign that you're having a stroke. Now, the S in Be Fast is speech, any problem with speech difficulty. In my case, I started sort of slurring my words, it was really horrible, but if you have a change in speech, I kind of sounded like I was drunk, then you really do need to call 911. Now, the T in Be Fast is time. And again, time is so essential in this. Don't wait till you have two or three of these symptoms. If you have any one of these symptoms, you just need to go ahead and bite the bullet and call 911, get that ambulance to your house, because it is super important that you act fast if you don't want to end up like my before picture. I am only the after picture so soon after my stroke today because I was super fast in identifying that I was having a problem and getting to the hospital Okay, you may wonder why I had the stroke. And I have to say, I was so impressed with Wesley Medical Center here in Wichita. And I thought at that time, Wesley would have kind of cured the damage from my stroke. I was back to normal, they would let me go. But no, they sent me to a full range of professionals. I had two cardiologists, I had two neurologists, which is brain people, and they all gave me various tests. I had two CT scans of my brain, which showed that I had a stroke in the upper right-hand quadrant of my brain. And then they did an MRI because they wanted to get a better look at that stroke area and what damage the clot had done to me. They also gave me a heart echocardiogram and another heart procedure. I can't remember what the name of it was, but they said, no, we don't just want to solve the symptoms and you go on your merry way. We really do need to get to the bottom of why you actually had the stroke in the first place. Wesley, I can't thank them enough. It was almost like I was at some center of excellence. Everybody worked as a team to find out why I had had this stroke. And I know many of you will know that I've been on the carnivore, very high fat carnivore diet for on and off for the past maybe nine months. And before that for two years, I was on the very high fat keto diet. And you may be thinking, well, was carnivore the problem? And I'm going to make you wait until my next video because I'm going to do another video on my stroke on the carnivore diet because I was truly surprised by what I found out about the whole diet issue, you know, a, a low fat diet versus a high fat diet, which would be better for me. And I will tell you just so you'll know what they ended up finding with me 
is that when they did the echocardiogram of my heart, they found that I had a little tiny hole in my heart and apparently what they think had happened is that exactly one week previously, on Tuesday of the week before, I was flying home from Washington because we had that girls trip in Canada and I had two flights coming home from, from Washington to Wichita, a two hour and a four hour flight and on transatlantic flights I always wear compression stockings but I did not realize that any time you're sitting for a long period I should have been wearing those socks on the plane. If you're traveling in a car for a long period, traveling in a plane, standing for a long period, you really do need to wear compression stockings. And I had not done that on my plane trip from the week before. And so what they're thinking may have happened is that I formed a small clot in my legs because those compression stockings keep your blood flowing and tend to cut down on the possibility that you'll get a blood clot. And so basically a whole week went by and then it went into my heart. And with most people who don't have this birth defect, this little hole in their heart, that clot would be filtered through the lungs and become smaller pieces and wouldn't cause you any problem. Well, in this case, according to the doctors, that clot probably went through that hole in my heart and got redirected right to my brain. And then when I was exercising, it unfortunately just happened that that stroke occurred and I'm going to put a link below the video to the compression socks and the compression stockings because especially as we get older I've realized how important it is to use those. In fact Alan and I this next week are taking a long car drive down to Arkansas with some friends and I'm going to be wearing those compression socks and so will Alan as well. Now of course I'm super thrilled to be back to normal after my stroke but also I think it was kind of meant to be because when they were doing the MRI of my brain they realized that in addition to the stroke I just had, that I have a brain aneurysm. And an aneurysm is a tiny bulge on a vein up in your brain. They said I could have had it my whole life and it may never cause any issues. But if I don't address it, there is the possibility that it would rupture and I would have a larger brain bleed and possible brain damage. And there is an outpatient procedure I could get in which they go up through the groin and they just take care of that little aneurysm so that it doesn't cause me any problems in the future. And let me know in the comments section if you want to see that video because I plan to have that procedure done in the fall. Well, thank you for being with me as I shared my experience of the stroke and the importance of getting help fast. And I hope you'll share this video on all of your social media channels because especially as we age, it is super important to get this word out. I am actually dedicating this video to Julie Lomax, a truly beautiful woman inside and out because I really feel that God put her in my path and unfortunately she did lose her life. But in doing so, she taught me and everyone out there a valuable lesson about identifying a stroke early on and getting treatment. Take care and may you and your family and friends remain healthy and happy. See you in my next video.